Okay. Hi. Hi. This is Steve Struggle here in North America talking to Dr. Wisefield, discussing political prisoners and other important issues of the day. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, Dr. Wisefield, what's going on? Well, there's this uh, war happening there, sort of, but it's a war that started eight years ago inside the Ukraine. When exactly. the, uh, you know, the, the right wing government, you know, allied with their new Nazi Azov, you know, brigade were right. attacking the Eastern territories, uh, yep. which were, you know, by, by cultural, you know, uh, communities, uh, both Russian and the Ukrainian speaking Ukrainian, but Russian Ukrainian, you know, like dual identity people. And right. so, you know, the, the central government wants to keep control of the territories because of the natural resources there, of course. And they couldn't care less about the people, you know. So they sent the uh, new Nazis after them, you know, like, and they resisted, yep. you know, and they've been uh, resisting in a small enclave there until Russia decided that, you know, like they were going to come in and uh, help them to defeat, you know, this um, new Nazi offensive, basically. In spite of, you know, the president being a Jewish, you know, third generation survivor of the Holocaust, you know, it's all sort of, you know, freaky. Hmm. Yeah. It, it, it is intriguing. Um... I, I, I have been um, somewhat reluctant to engage my um, associates who are leftists on this topic. They very well don't know what they're talking about. They're ignorant of history and facts. Yeah. And they're using, I never thought I would say that, they're using an analysis of Marxism to justify uh. their anti-historical approach to a question. I never thought I would say that. Mm -hmm. Their views have been shocking to me, historically, and, I, and I, in fact, I'm pretty sure you're saying what you said. Mm -hmm. This is a historical, this whole conflict is based on a historical development, like it or not. And the United States is sitting in the background, kind of kind of like you're doing, ah, good. Now this means you really do a few things, you know? But they start the whole thing. Mm. They start the conflicts around the world, nine out of 10. And we can't just say, oh, we're opposed to this. Well, wait a minute, how does all, how does all come about? You have to look at history. If you don't do that, you're going to come up with these weird analysis which don't make any sense historically. Mm. So I'm really happy to hear some of you bring us some historical situations here because... Yeah. Most people I'm in conflict with just I don't know that they, they 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 seem to lack this the integrity to make these these um to to look at situations with the, with, with the historical lens. And you have to do that. If you don't, yeah. you're, gonna, you, you're just going to make mistakes. That's yeah. all. Uh, you know, they they only have you know knowledge of what's going on. You know, by the corporate media in the first place, probably. They don't do any research on their own and they don't uh, true true i have <laughs> i made sure to do my research i said oh this was going on okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly right and and I, i'm not saying I, I i i'm so great no i'm not yeah. but i do think when you have a flashpoint and this is a flashpoint in the world for the last for quite a few years and just all, all, all the run up and all the debate, United Nations and this, that, and the other, mm. you got to ask, well, what is the, what is the background of this story this historically from all sides mm. that, that I think you're able to look at it a little more with a better, more with a nuanced view. So I'm disappointed yeah. Yeah. in sure. what I've seen from so-called great scholars on the left. I know I would never say this, yeah. but they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. They don't, and well, you know, you know I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I hope that we can get a peaceful resolution to everything. It just seems to me, though, that the status quo of, of the EU and the United States wants to make sure Russia has no um, territorial defense. You know, NATO keeps pushing closer. Yeah. The fascists are, are allowed to willy nilly attack the Donbas and the uh, Luhansk regions. We're both say, oh well, that's just the way it is, you know. Deal with it. No. Yeah. When when people have enough, then yeah, I get a strange response. You might get rioting. You might get, you know, you know what I'm saying. You might get, you know, yeah, responses that are violent or or un are not tasty. 
but it happens when you let stuff build up and keep building up. Yeah. And then, wait, like, um, um, history, history, full, history is is full of examples like this. Yes, it is. So I, I'm I'm glad we had this discussion yeah. because you know um, the propaganda of the of the news media um, has been relentless, and you, we know the CIA is and the news media are spewing out these reports. Yeah. <laughs> change public opinion. I mean, we know that they're sharing intelligence with the fascists on the ground yeah. and the Ukrainian army. So it's not like the Ukrainian army is fighting uh, or the fact they're fighting Russia alone. No, they have the United States and British secret intelligence and people on the mercenaries. This is, this is what's going on right now, but it's not going to ever be in the news. It may be in the news 50 years from now. Mm-hmm. But based yeah. on history, we know this, this has to be occurring based on how People do things, you know. Yeah, yeah. And there's no word at all about the Minsk agreement. You know, this conflict was resolved already once. You know, there was an agreement to grant them autonomy, territorial autonomy, you know, within a federation of the Ukraine. But the Ukraine, you know, new government didn't respect the agreement, you know. Sure didn't. They sent, you know, them their military forces, who were the neo-Nazi brigade, you know, the most action-oriented, you know, to go and occupy the territory. And they took about three quarters of the territory, actually, of the two, the two uh uh, previous provinces, you know, that have now become independent because it seems they had no other choice. So, you know, well, I, I would appreciate, you know, that the Russian, you know, uh, forces, you know, have come in as peacekeepers, you know, to stop the uh, military advance of the Ukrainian neo-Nazi forces, you know. I would appreciate if they went to Palestine did the same, you know, to stop the Zionist military. Really, I mean, it's, at a certain point, somebody's got to step in and, cl- and clear up the mess. Yeah. Somebody's got to step in and clear up them. And this is what's happening now. I mean, that's how I see it. Maybe I'm wrong. But, you know, at a certain point, it comes ahead. What are we going to do here? Yeah. We have to do something. And it's not, it's not always the most tasty um, uh, choices. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, how I, that's how I see it. I mean, I hate seeing people getting shot. hate seeing people getting bombed. hate seeing helicopters. You know, I hate all, seeing all that kind of stuff. But sometimes that's what it has come up to. And I think in this situation here, it has come to this. Yeah. Maybe I I'm wrong. It, Maybe uh, you should I, prove me wrong. I think Russia is doing it in a way, you know, that's very uh, uh, appropriate, you know, in terms of international law, because it's not attacking, you know, any civilian air, residential areas and or, or the cities. Actually, they've asked, you know, the Ukrainian military to take over the government, you know, and take over the capital away from this uh this uh, government has uh, lost control of its own military. So that would mean civil war, you know, within the Ukrainian military between the neo-Nazis, you know. Right. The, right. Ooh, that would be revolutionary, you know. This could start, you know, something big. Yeah. Well, the, other- the, the, the Ukrainian army, if it's worth its muster, needs to purge itself of the fascists. The fascists have to go. Yeah. Once the fascists are gone, then I think something else can be worked out. The fascists, the fascists running around with guns, hmm. uh, uh, bombing people. And let me tell you something. I'm really concerned about one thing. The, those jihadists allied with the fascists, that Chernobyl nuclear plant, if it's not protected, they're going to attack it. Hmm. Hmm. And if they attack a nuclear plant, you have all hell is going to break loose around the world. Hmm. 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 Oh, I, I just, I'm, I'm a little... Yeah. How... how how distasteful they can be in their tactics. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm not yeah. saying they're going to do that. I'm not saying they're going to do anything. I'm not, I'm not suggesting anyone should do anything so terrible as that. Yeah. Don't the, don't put it past them. To, yeah, that's right. They could do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Radioactivity spread all throughout Europe by red as well. Yeah. Oh well. Right. 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 They have to be stopped. That's right. Yeah. They have to be had and it's just it's just not, it's not the nicest outcome of events. We don't, we go to the table, work on the, you know, work things out, yeah. shake, and get elbows and go home. But sometimes it don't happen like that. And this, I think this is one of these situations where, whoa, look at this. That's terrible. People going downstairs and going inside the subway and not be blown up. Well, it is terrible. And that's what they got to do to not, to not get, to not get attacked. So... <laughs> But, uh, you know, they're not even getting attacked, you know, so it's uh, like a hysteria that's being built up against the, the Russian intervention. I don't True. think it's a, even a war, you know, it's like an intervention. It's like a peacekeeping force. Yeah. But, uh, of course, they can, you know, Putin can make mistakes as well, you know, so he could sort of, you know, get carried away with himself. I think he's a little Napoleon, 
but uh, you know, I think we could stop anything like that in any case. You know, but uh, yeah, uh, I agree. Mention just uh, uh, until now, you know, like is uh, quite welcome. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I think that you have to be getting to uh, to uh, 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 anti police brutality action uh, this afternoon as well. So, well, but I I, I want to talk though before before we do that, um, talk about the situation with COVID mm. in, in the U.S. In, in the schools around the world and the situation. You know. Um, I think people need to be very, very cautious about, well, first of all, first of all, in the third world, in the third world where vaccines aren't even available. I mean, all the Western cavalier attitude toward COVID that we see from scientists, that's definitely not appropriate in the third world because vaccine is not even the amount of me medical interventions isn't even available. Sure. The people in the West who are uh, one of relaxed standards need to kind of consider the hypocrisy of what they're doing. Sure. When they, no one has ever demanded that I know of on a consistent basis from the left, or from progressive consistently, vaccination of the world. Hmm. No. And if you're talking about relaxing standards now, you'll have to say, well, maybe that's not even important to vaccinate the world. Let's, you know, let's just let it go. We can have a party now. Take off your mask, have some fun, get infected. Hey, man, don't worry about it, you know? Yeah. I think those who are most, I'm going to tell you something, those I know who are most concerned about COVID are those who've lost people to COVID. Mm -hmm. They're using, they're, you usually find those are the most concerned because they've seen what COVID can do. Yeah. They lose a husband, the, or the orphan situation in the world, where the parents are, are deceased and now the children become orphans because they have nowhere else to go. This is not a good situation for relaxing standards at all. Yeah. I mean, the government could just take over the pharmaceutical companies and tell them to produce, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, what is necessary, you know, and give it away for free. You know, they could just do that. But they don't. Right. They don't. They yeah. don't. And they don't do any, do any further research either. You know, they could develop, you know, like a, a production, you know, on industrial scale, in a pharmaceutical company facilities of the uh, uh, non-patented, you know, uh, generic uh, monoclonal antibody virus, you know, that could be harvested, you know, from the most recent patients who have convalesced and therefore get the antibodies, you know, that are directly antiviral and not just anti spiegel you know of the crust of the virus. Mm -hmm. That would be more effective, in fact. But right. they're not doing right. it. They're it, not doing it. Done, but they're not doing it, no. And so it makes you wonder, you have to wonder why. You, I mean, you have to wonder why they do anything. You have to wonder why the relaxation, and I'm of the opinion, and I hopefully I'm not wrong, hopefully I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, mm -hmm. that they, they give a damn. Mm -hmm. It's all making money if we can keep this if we can keep the program going mm -hmm. keep those op keep casinos open yeah keep the horror houses open <laughs> keep grocery stores open keep everybody going to work yeah, and, and and therefore people will give me some money for my election campaign because i decided we need to have it open that's cool yeah i dies oh we're so sorry yeah yeah oh oh we're so sorry so <laughs> i mean they, they have a oh uh, 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 you have our, uh, you have our, our condolences. What? Yeah. Yeah. Mark from you, dude. Yeah. So I just, I just want people to be. I hope people who are listening will talk to their colleagues, their comrades, their friends about intensifying the campaign for vaccination, for keeping your circle tight, and to eliminate the virus. If, if we, if we don't fight to eliminate it, we're mm -hmm. just going to be around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, would you accept HIV around? No. Mm. That measles? No. Mm. That months? No. Mm -hmm. So why, 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 why do you want to accept COVID? Somebody told you to accept COVID. Who? Yeah, like polio. Yeah. You know, like either you want exactly. it or you, don't, you know, like <laughs> yeah, you want that around, and uh, you, I'm just hey, no, you don't want it around, do you? Because yeah. You don't want to get it. Yeah. So yeah. why 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 be so cavalier about this? Yeah. Sometimes you, know, you have to just what you got to do, man. The polio vaccine is a good example of how that vaccine was developed at the University of Toronto and uh, given away for free, you know, like there was no patent put on it. And that was Canada laboratories, yeah. 
Now, there's a certain, you know, example of irony that is happening here in the pandemic, you know, because the, you know, bourgeois politicians, you know, want everybody to get back to work, you know, why? To get the economy going again, you know, yeah. so, that, you know, so, you know, ironically, they're admitting that the economy doesn't work without the workers. You know? Very true. So this is an affirmation. Oh, no, of the very labor true. theory very of value, true. you know. <laughs> very true. Very true. Very true. And here. And proof well, positive, you know. <laughs> and, so, and so many people don't, people might not know about, maybe it's occurring in Canada as well. In the United States, fast food joints are shutting down at seven o'clock. They can't even buy the staff a second shift. Uh -huh. Yes, if you want to go to some place for food joint, get something to eat, you know, which I think is horrible food, but it's not the point. Yeah, everything's shutting down. No, but, but they're closing. They're not even open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Starbucks coffee, six o'clock, closed. Yeah. This, a whole shift has been, a whole shift of workers yeah. has been eliminated from earning money. Yeah. And the necessity of, you know, shutting everything down, you know, for a while to stop, you know, the roller coaster, you know, speed, your know, momentum of pandemic, you know, is absolutely necessary. In the United States, that's continuing because it didn't take care of itself, you know, in the first place. That's right. In Quebec, Thank you. we've had, you know, uh, you know, severe restrictions, you know, at a number of points, you know, when there were peaks, you know, starting up again. Right. And here in Quebec, you know, we've been successful in stopping it. And now we've, we peaked at the end of January and it's been declining ever since. So the uh, restrictions here are going to be loosened, you know, by by in the month of March, next month, you know, restrictions are being loosened, you know, yeah. uh, lessened here. And, uh, uh, and, and so uh, either you take care of yourself or you don't, you know, like if you think that everybody lives as a free individual, <clears throat> you're not gonna survive, you know, but that's not freedom. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not. You're not. And um, I, I commend countries, be they capitalists or socialists or in between, who at least take some measures. The United States took no measures with Omicron, absolutely none. Mm -hmm. it's, it, is an, it, it, it is an offense against humanity that when something is, a, 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 when, when, a disease, when a disease, when a virus is spreading among your population and it's gonna, it's gonna negatively impact people, you do nothing. <laughs> yeah. that's, not, that's, not, that's not cool at all. No, no, that's what no, we no. fight against the that's what we, that's what we fight against the system they're showing itself they want war and they don't want and 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 they don't want help uh health, healthy population if it's going to make if if it if that requires them to d diminish then d diminish businesses and and our demand now has always been full compensation to families to businesses we have to shut down because mm -hmm. You know they have to survive too. Mm -hmm. the That's right. of, of, yeah. of like the real the real left is full compensation while we have these temporary shutdowns. Yeah. You have to you have to demand that if people have people you yeah. can't you know, and you know that the, those demands aren't even they 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 are ignored by the politicians, but the politicians are, are going to ignore anything that yeah. this is their ability to get funding from their 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 donors who are the business class. Yeah. Either the either there's a social security or there isn't, you know. And if there right. isn't, then this government is of no use to the people. And the people have to organize themselves. That's it. That's all. Right. Yeah. So thank you, Dr. Watson, for talking to us. Conversation. Mm, and thanks for speaking with and me. And I hope I hope everyone who, who hears our program will think about the Ukraine situation and, and its historical precedence and what has caused it historically and not be brainwashed by the press and also the need is to continue to fight COVID-19 and to demand international vaccination, especially especially within the third world. Mm -hmm. Very good. Bye-bye. That's it.